Hi, uh, you're watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley, and we are at the 127th AES Conference in New York. And I am here with, with I am here with Chris Muth of Dangerous Music. It's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what Dangerous Music uh, specializes in. Dangerous Music builds backbone equipment for studios. Um, we started out uh, with friends of ours that used to have um, large format consoles, and they tossed them out and bought Pro Tool systems like that and found out that they didn't have monitor systems, cue systems, ways of listening to different boxes around the room. So we started our company building um, equipment that would replace what they threw out. Headphone systems, talk back, and everything except for EQs and compressors, basically. So that's that's the reason why we started doing that. We, we wanted to keep our stuff unique and um, it was in the beginning, and then a lot of people figured out that we were doing something right and started copying our stuff. So, which is interesting. It's flattery, right? Well, not exactly, but it's okay because our stuff still wins the shootouts. So, <laughs> it's a little more expensive, but we think it's worth it. Uh, and so, how long has the company been around? Uh, Dangerous Music was a recording studio in the early '90s, uh, so it actually is going on 16, 18 years, something like that. Um, Bob. And I just started, I, I bought out of Bob's partner in the studio uh, in the late 90s. And then somewhere around then, that's when friends of ours, what, what would happen is we'd build custom equipment for rock stars. And other people wanted the same stuff. And then uh, we decided it was much easier to build um, more than one thing. It's a lot easier to, if you sit down and you build one box, it's going to be 12,000 bucks worth of design time and parts and all that. And uh, if you build 100 of them, then they're going to be $500 each. So it's it's just a matter of scale. Other people had asked us for the same things, and then we decided to start a company doing that. So what would you say the, the flagship product of Dangerous Music is right now? Well, the flagship product is whatever is selling the most and we make the most money on. So right. So what's that? That would be the D-Box. It's our uh, relatively new. The D-Box is cool because it's a... Uh, it's a little bit of several different boxes. I built the, the original prototype D-Boxes for Kevin Killen. Uh, he wanted something, one RU, that would go in a side thing. Eight channels of true audio mic breeze and an M-Box on his laptop. He wanted to go record a U2 concert or something like that. And he, he needed a little box that had a monitor section, a small 8x2 mixer, a D to A converter to listening to things, and he just needed a control central thing. The D-Box is actually a very cool product because it's one of those things that it's not really expensive and people that have entry level or editing at home studios can use it. People that have high end top of the line stuff can use it. So it's a, it's a, it's a product that's versatile and good enough for the very top guys to use and at the same time it's not super expensive. So that's, I think that's why it's popular. Um, so uh, talk about analog summing and why, uh, or uh, I guess di the digital revolution, is that part of what inspires, uh, inspires the company's direction? Well, we build tools for people that have bought into the digital revolution and didn't have everything they needed to make their system work. I mean, that's basically, I'm not a in the box, out of the box, like something in the box sucks and something out of the box is great. It's actually really not about that at all. Um, the, the reason why we build our stuff the way we do, uh, the people that we built it for happened to be artists that had good analog equipment lying around. Um, for instance, uh, with a D-Box, if you have eight inputs, you can have a pair of API EQs and a pair of a pendulum audio compressor and you know, have some of your favorite analog stuff around and patch it into the thing. When you're mixing out of your, out of your digital system, you'll look up and say, okay, I want to run my drum space and guitar through the pendulum compressor, that's on bus one. You assign your stuff to that bus, and it's coming out. And basically what it does is it takes those 12 or 15 faders, and it runs them out of that pair of converters at an optimum level. Um, in other words, if you have a big mix inside the box, you're having to turn everything down. Everything is competing to live on two buses to be in stereo. Whereas if you break the buses up into multiple things, it was our contention, and I still believe it to be so, and a lot of our fans say so, that the computer actually sounds better working in smaller chunks and pairs. Um, in other words, someone will buy 
a two bus that has eight stereo pairs, they'll say, well, I want a pair for drums, a pair for vocals, a pair for this, a pair for that, and then patch in their stuff. They can work faster because they don't have to pull up plugins on 16 different channels. They can patch in a pair of EQs and go click, okay, that sounds good. Um, and not have to use their analog gear through an insert and go back into digital. There's, it's, it's all, there's all sorts of little ways that the dangerous music stuff helps you get your creativity flow moving faster and have it, so we think it sounds better working that way too. It's more convenient, it's more fun. So if, for someone who's just bought, let's say, like a, it's a, a Digi 003 rack, like what would be, what would be the dangerous music product that they would they should look at first? Well, the Digi 03 is a fine product, and we have one sitting in our rack hooked into a D box uh, because it's an eight output and the D box is eight ins, and it, it's it's a good combination. The, the the Pro 3 is a good box. It's an inexpensive box, um, and so the D box is its match. Um, someone who will go out and buy Prism converters, and they're going to want a two bus. It's a more expensive system. So we we make stuff that caters to the someone who wants to spend several thousand dollars making the system or someone who wants to spend seventy thousand dollars making the system. We'll, we'll, we make boxes of, in the different levels. But the good news is, is it all sounds relatively the same. It isn't like our cheap box has, has awful input amplifiers. They, they all use the same technology. They all borrow from each other because I'm lazy, basically. It's, so as far as like more expensive boxes go, um, what would be what, what would you describe as one of your uh, the more uh, the top selling like pro pro audio? Well, our most expensive box I think is the Master, uh, which is a two-channel analog backbone system for hooking up all your EQs and compressors for mastering CDs. Um, and that one's expensive just because the the switches on the front panel are stupid. They cost us so much money; it's unbelievable. Um, but it's also, that's a, actually a very good piece, and, and it's a la carte. I mean, that one's meant to go with a monitor and an MQ. So those three boxes together will make a mastering backbone system that's about $11,000.